Okay, so let's work this problem. Um, this is um, a problem that I pulled out of the book. I don't remember the number. Um, but it's, it wants the shear force and bending moment diagram for this frame. So um, A is a roller. It's hard to see here, but you can see there's no connecting materials. And then C is a pin. So we need to find uh, those reactions and the interior uh, shear force and bending moment at point B. So let's uh, make things a little easier for ourselves right now for our reactions. I'm just going to use this as my free body diagram. Let's get a concentrated equivalent for this distributed load. Uh, it's 3 kilonewtons per meter times 4 meters, so that's 12 kilonewtons. And it's going to happen right in the, in the middle, so that'll be 2 meters at either direction. And then at the end, or at the supports, I'll have a reaction AY, a reaction CY, and CX. So this shouldn't be too hard to find these reactions. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to sum uh, moments at A. No, no, at C. I'm sorry, at C. Because there's two unknowns there, I should be able to find AY, one equation, one unknown. So I'm going to sum moments about C. Uh, about C, this 24 kilonewton point load creates positive moment. So there's 24 kilonewtons. And it has a moment arm of 3 meters. Then I have my concentrated equivalent force here, which is also creating positive moment. The force is 12 kilonewtons. And the moment arm is 2 meters. And then I have a Y, which is creating negative moment, times a moment arm of 6 meters. So you guys might have to help me, but what's the reaction at, at A? 16. Sorry, I'm sorry? 16. 16. Anybody else get that? It's okay? Six is four, four, twelve. Yep, I got that. Okay, so now we'll sum forces in the y direction. By doing that, I should be able to find cy. So I have ay acting up plus cy acting up, and then I have that twenty-four kilonewton force acting down. So it looks like cy is equal to eight. And then last, I will sum forces in the x direction. Make sure everything's in equilibrium. I've got my 12 kilonewton load, which is the equivalent of this distributed load, acting to the right. And I also assume Cx acted to the right. So my Cx is negative 12. So I have all the pieces I need. Now, I want to take this apart at D and find those uh, internal reactions at D. Do you want to work uh, AB or BC? BC? Yeah, I think BC looks better. So let's do that. So I'll go to section BC. And I'll draw a quick free body diagram. So what I have is my... 24 kilonewton force acting down, and that's at 3 meters. I have CY, which is up, it's 8 kilonewtons, and I have CX, which is to the left, which is 12 kilonewtons. And then at B, I will assume. BX, BY, and a moment at B. Three unknowns, I can write three equilibrium equations. So starting with that, I'm going to first sum moments about B. Make sure they're in equilibrium. Remember, this is always a good place to start because you don't have to worry about BX or BY you'll just get the moment in terms of the other unknowns. So the way I've drawn B, uh, this is a positive bending moment, 
but when I do my statics, I'm using right hand rule, so that comes out to be negative. The 24 kilonewton force also creates negative moment. It has a moment arm of 3 meters. Uh, the 8 kilonewton creates positive moment, has a moment arm of 6 meters. And then all the X forces pass through B, so no moment. So what's the moment at B? Negative 24. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Uh, okay, so let's sum forces in the y direction. Make sure they're in equilibrium. So I have by acting up. And then I have 24 kilonewtons acting down and 8 kilonewtons acting up. So it looks like by is 16. Positive. And then last, some forces in the x direction. I have Bx and minus 12. So it looks like Bx is 12. So now I have all the pieces I need to. Uh, for all the shear moment diagram. So I got a fresh piece of paper here. Let's start by drawing the shear moment diagram for section BC. That's probably the easiest one to, to visualize. So I'll come over here. Let's see where should I, how I can fit this in. I think I'll do it right here. So here's section BC. So I'll draw the beam. I've got a 24 kilonewton load here. I found my reaction at C in the y direction was uh, 8 kips, kilonewton, sorry. And we just saw for the reaction at BY, let's see it's way down here, it was positive 16. So this is positive 16. And we also saw for the moment, uh, the moment was negative 24, uh, which was this direction. So let's just review again. So I assume the moment was this direction. I got a negative sign, so it's opposite. By, I assumed, was 16. It was positive, so that's the right direction. So that should be the loading on BC. Uh, the distances are three meters and three meters. So I'll go ahead and quickly sketch a template to help me draw my shear force and bending moment diagram. I'll start with the shear force. So I'll have a positive shear. All my values will be kilonewtons. So what's the shear starting at the left side? What's this shear? That's a positive shear, right? So we're going to start off at 16. Uh, remember that the change in shear is the area under the load curve. And you'll see there is no load curve, so there should be no change in shear. So I should stay 16. Also, the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the load and the load is zero so I have zero slope then as I move from the left side to the right side under this 24 kilonewton force that's going to be a change of negative 24 so that should bring me down to negative 8 and again the change in shear is entering the load curve, which is zero, so I should stay negative eight. And the slope is equal to the load, 
The load is zero, so I have zero slope. So there's my shear diagram. And it matches that this force is also negative shear. All right, so now let's draw the moment diagram. All these values will be kilonewton meter. So we're going to start with a moment of what? Negative 24. And we know that the change in moment is the area under the shear diagram. So what is the area under the shear diagram? 16 times 3. Is that 48? So that's a positive 48. So 24 minus, uh, plus 48 brings me to 24. And the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. And what is the shear? It's positive and it's constant. So I'll have a positive constant slope. In fact, if I looked at the value, it would be 16 to 1. Now, as I move over the last three meters, the area under the shear diagram is negative, negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. 24 minus 24 brings me to 0. And the slope of that is the load, which is 8. So for every 1 I go this way, I drop minus 8. So there's my moment diagram. So now I need to draw the section for A to B. Do we have time for that? Yep. Yeah, we do. Now, I like to rotate it, so I'm going to do the same thing. So let me come over here and say... There's section AB. And I'm going to rotate it into this position. So this is A and this is B. Uh, at A, there is no X component, right? So I have no shear. I do have a distributed load that goes across the whole structure. And that has an intensity of 3 kilonewtons per meter. And this has a length of 4 meters. Now over here at B, let's look back a little bit at what we found here at B. So if I found uh, BX to the right here, then on section AB it would be to the left and I found BX to be positive. So that means my BX value is in this direction. Right? Now, if I assume the moment was clockwise here, it's going to be counterclockwise on section BC, but it's negative. So that means it's going to be clockwise. Uh, did I say that right? Yes. yes. So that means this moment here is going to be 24 kilonewton meters. So there's the loading. Oh, that's completely wrong is why. Sorry. There's nothing at A. A is is just has no it has just an axial force no shear force no moment so there's nothing at A A is just out there by itself so um, let's see. so the moment is this direction thank you yeah that would not have worked out very good It's opposite direction of this one. Remember, these two have to connect back together. This is point B and BC. This is point B and AB. So one is positive right-hand rule. One is negative right-hand rule. Either way, they have to cancel.
All right, so let me uh, extend the template on this one. Let's see what we get. So here's shear. Kilonewton. What's the shear at A? Zero. Zero. The change in shear is the error in the load curve. And the error in the load curve is minus 12. So I drop down to minus 12. The slope of the shear diagram is equal to the value of the load. The value of the load is constant and negative. So there's my shear diagram. In fact, the slope would be uh, minus 3 to 1. So now let's draw the moment diagram. Positive x, positive moment. What's the moment at A? Zero. What's the moment at B? Negative 24. Oh. The change in moment should be the error in the shear diagram. What's the error in the shear diagram? 4 times 12 divided by 2 is negative 24. So that gets me there. And what's the shape? Well, it's going to start off with a slope of 0 and get progressively larger. So we'd start off with a slope of 0 and get progressively larger. So if we connect that, we might get look something like that. Right, it's a spandrel, parabolic spandrel shape. Any questions about that? Let's see, that took 16 minutes and 59 seconds. I think it's doable. Yeah.